All right, so I'm sitting in Dead Horses live chat, and you guys have been talking about Freedom Group, which is really Cerebus or whatever it's called, right? And all I did is, as you guys were talking here, is I went online and did quick research. So the first place I went was Google, and I typed in what is Freedom Group, and I got a couple of results from that. And this one is from the NRA ILA, and I realize people are going to hate anything from the NRA. So I've got this one from the New York Times, which is an article from, scrolling up because I read through it, uh, from 2011. Uh, then we've got a wiki about Remington, the company. And then I've got this thing from something called Fandom, powered by wiki, or I don't know what it is, but it was an interesting kind of summary of Freedom Group. Uh, then I was curious because Freedom Group is owned by Cerebus Capital Management, so I typed in what is that into Google, and it told me about Cerebus, and I clicked over to figure out, uh, once you get to the Cerebus website, I know what private equity is, I know what middle market lending is in real estate, I wasn't sure what distressed securities and assets was, so I clicked on that, and that took me over to what that is, and then lastly, uh, one of these things mentioned the industry and or the, the how much money the industry brings in so I thought it might be interesting to compare that with all the other industries in this country so what I found out was that Freedom Group bought Remington sure you guys are looking at this from the end user consumer in a capitalist society we all acknowledge that yes <coughs> so you can have whatever opinions you want but in real life things have to be manufactured, there has to be skilled people, there has to be material, and then there has to be a market for something perfect to exist. So uh, when you look at what Freedom Group is, uh, it came to life in, um, Freedom Group came to life in one of these articles, and again I didn't do tons of research so I'm going to have to peck and paw through this stuff to find it, but for the most part Freedom Group came to life into existence here it is in 2007 when Remington Arms which would purchase Marlin in 2008 was bought by Cerebus Care Capital Manage a, a private equity firm so in other words private meaning not government or not state private equity money company so people who have money in a company right as opposed to government or opposed to military or something else uh, whatever whatever Came, freedom came into existence when this Cerebris company bought Remington and they already had owned Bushmaster from a year before. So they said, hey, since we now own two firearms companies, why don't we put them under a heading in our company, a division or whatever you want to call it, thus Freedom Group. Okay, so you have Remington in 2007. I haven't had time to research it, but I've heard from people who aren't anti-capitalist uh, that Remington wasn't going to exist much longer. That if you no, look Remington up, right? If you look up what this distressed securities is, distressed securities means purchasing the equity and fixing income securities of companies that are either in bankruptcy or have been, or have a meaningful likelihood of filing for bankruptcy in the near future. These companies have claims against well, them that are greater than the bankruptcy. value. These values, these so companies have claims against them. Job. No, I know what they did there. They transferred all the debt from the collective Freedom Group to Remington. All right, if that's what you want to believe, then we're done. But I was trying to present to you some information no, I'm that shows. G. I'm just, I'm listening. I just, I'm not, I'm not trying to. Uh, so, so you're going to suggest that you'd ha rather have no Remington than have a company come along with money and bail out a company that was about to go under that had been around since Remington invented the company, and I can go find that out for you, 18 something. <laughs> So right. it went well, out of saying. business. So we can have we have a company that's floundering, a company that is not able to pr to support themselves. You can have the best baker in the world, but if he doesn't know how to buy flour and have a marketing system that sells the product that he makes, which are perfect, then that perfect baker is not going to be in business very long. So I'm not here to to defend Remington or to defend Freedom Group, but I am here to defend capitalism and an actual honest look at what we're talking about here. So if we had a company that was about to go out of business and another company based on private money came along and bought it and instead of destroying it and taking it apart like a lot of these companies that buy bankrupt stuff and just sell the product, 
they didn't. They tried to salvage what they could and keep a company alive. Now they did not succeed and every product was not then perfect and they didn't go on to be the biggest, you know, bigger than Smith & Wesson or Colt, but they exist. So if we continue to look on at Cerebris, who are they owned by? The senior leadership at Cerebris is, uh, includes two generals and Dan Quayle. So I suppose it's possible that they're anti-gun or it's a group of people who have money and have an interest in seeing places like Remington, Marlin, uh, and all those other companies that they own still existing. And if the fact is that if they were about to go out of business, I think it's unreasonable to, su to suggest that a company that was floundering on bankruptcy is gonna just simply turn around and be perfect. I think that they came along and instead of just disassembling the mm -hmm. company and selling the milling, yeah, they, they uh, scale down they concentrate on stuff, they make wrong and right decisions, and they try to uh, as be as efficient as possible. But to suggest that Remington was minding their own business and Freedom Arm Freedom Group came along and took them, and they're like trying That's to strangle the second, I know, I'm exaggerating in order to prove a point. If I can't do that, then we aren't gonna communicate well. But the same thing with Cerebris, if you're gonna suggest that people who have private money and are trying to keep Second Amendment businesses alive have to be perfect, in order to not be de demonized or not be uh, considered the, the scorn of something, then I think we're doing ourselves a disservice. The same way that FUDs will throw magazines or uh, small handguns under the bus. I mean, in the same conversation, you guys are complaining about Freedom Group, which is two army generals and Dan Quayle and a bunch of regular people who have money who decided to keep their money in the Second Amendment for advanced armament, Barnes Bullets, Bushmaster, Dakota Arms, DPMS, Marlin, uh, Para USA, which was a Canadian company that now we have here, Remington, all the different Remingtons, and Tapco. Uh, it, again, we would rather see all wow, these companies gone. So all I'm yeah, saying is let's you... let's give it a, an honest look and not demonize Freedom Group as someone who came in and harp in and and took. I think that they came in and offered money, and they're probably losing money all this time. And instead of sweating it. They're, they're efforting. So we can bitch and moan and complain and pick them apart, but what are we talking about here? In something, and let me finish with this. When I looked through here, it said one of these things was saying something about the industry, and it gets down to talk about uh, the NSSF, the National Shooting Sports Foundation, and they say that the National Shooting Sports Foundation, I think this was a 2012 article, says the sales of guns and ammunition total four billion annually. Four billion annually. It might sound like a big number, but let me go to my last point here and take a look at the top 20 industries in this country. This is billions, yes, and it starts out with 1,800 billion for real estate, and it goes down to the 20th is 173 billion for agriculture. To suggest that the, what did I say, 8 billion or whatever it is uh, that guns are, the 4 billion, excuse me, the 4 billion that we have any hope of surviving in a country this big, I think that it's uh, commendable for rich people to keep Remington, Tapco, and all these other shitty companies alive, and I wish they would have done it for some of the other shitty companies because shitty guns are the same as Harbor Freight. We, if we don't want shitty guns, we don't want guns. I'll rest my case. Okay, point taken, uh, uh, G. I understand where you're coming from on that, but I think you have got a little off on what we were trying to say. Oh, I have to exaggerate in order to prove a point, but I'm trying to, I guess, oh, yeah, champion yeah. for capitalism here, and I'm not trying to suggest Freedom Group is some kind of saints or anything, but I'm saying that rich people decide where to throw their money, and they could just as easily have thrown that money at restaurants in Europe, and they threw it at oh, Second yeah. Amendment companies and here, and they don't have to have home runs in order to get at least a little credit for being in the game. Okay, I can, I can understand that, I can appreciate that. But when you started talking about them trying to, when they were trying, they look, looking at bankruptcy and Freedom Group came in and bailed them out um, at that aspect, they didn't consolidate. They bought Marlin, they bought all these companies that were doing fine by themselves. Bushmaster wasn't going anywhere. Marlin was Bushmaster going was just getting out. demonized for Sandy Hook and the Washington sniper thing. Let's remember history. Bushmaster is well, still scrutinized as the evil gun. Yes, I agree with you on the uh, on the news campaign part of it. But what I was trying to get at, and I don't think you caught, maybe you, you misunderstood, 
was that when Freedom Group bought up all these companies, they weren't looking to, to extend um, the Second Amendment. They were looking to make goddamn money. Right on. They're capitalists. They but they made that's their that's money wrong. in yeah. Second Amendment. They could have made their money doing millions of other things. But they did it with the Second Amendment. So if we're going to say again that they have to be perfect, they have to be altruistic, they have to be, you know, the way we would ideally manage money if we had it, <laughs> they're capitalists, they could have spent their money anywhere, and they spent it on Second Amendment, and it could have been a hell of a lot worse. Look at the way some companies get bought and stripped apart for their, their million dollar mills and their metals and their shelving. That didn't happen. We still have a Remington. Yeah, gee whips, I think what you're doing there is you're taking this out of context to, to suit your narrative. Sure, I'm trying to prove a point because a lot of times people will rag on Freedom Group and Cerebrus, or however you say that one, and this was an opportunity to talk about that. Right, but I don't think anybody was ragging on Freedom Group. I think your question was originally about the quality of the, the uh, Remington Trigger uh, pre-Freedom Group versus post-Freedom Group. I don't think there was anybody... Well, I was ragging on Freedom Group. Oh, come on, please. Now you're yeah. selectively oh, taking yeah, the couple of things that you said or somebody said and not the whole real narrative here, which was Remington was good to go and everything was great, and then Freedom Group came along, and now their triggers are dangerous and bad. Come on. Mm, no, I don't think that was the case. I don't Sorry. think that's what we were talking about because no. we were all saying that Freedom Group had problems before, or not Freedom Group, my bad. Uh -huh. Remington had problems with the 700 years, decades, before Freedom Group ever got involved. And they had multi-million dollar lawsuits, and they even made a statement that Mr. Walker told on, on the 60-minute interview that he said, I'll probably lose my fucking retirement over telling you this. But they've changed things. And they're not doing things the way a stand-up gun company should be doing things. And I, I'll take a 70-year-old man that's worked for the company his entire life over a company that just comes in with uh, multi-million or billion-dollar investors, buys up the, and puts their money in the Second Amendment. Yeah, I could see it from your route. We still have a Remington. But the Remington of the past was a thing of, the, it was a thing of quality. The and Remington of the past is still a thing of the future because of the because it speaks volumes of the quality that was built. But the Remington of the present will not be the Remington of the future because of the lack of quality. Not my choice. Well, I was just trying to bring. I got your point. Yeah, you're not. I you're understand my where you're coming from, and you are correct. But I'm just trying to. You know, I'm just basically. I'm not a big Remington fan, but I am a Second Amendment supporter. And I am a big fan of that. And anybody that's in the gun business, whether they mean to or not, is supporting the Second Amendment because they're employing people to manufacture firearms. That's the bottom line. I just want the quality to come up. Back to the way Remington once was when the family name was stamped on every gun. That's all I'm getting at. I mean, Go ahead, Knight. Your mic works. We're just used to just chatting in. Just go ahead and talk. Where go? Sounded like you were trying you to talk. It, huh? uh, I'm just trying to take this for, for what it is. It's serious or not. Not you guys. But the guy that told me to go ahead. Like, he come in here and said he was going live. So you can see the type of corner he's live. Then we heard the last conversation. So I don't know if he's trying to trick you and troll you or what. Who is? is? The G webs. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, I'm recording this portion of a conversation. The whole chat has been live ever since we've been in it. This is Dead Horse's chat. We've been live the whole conversation. I'm just recording a portion of it, but you don't get any indication of that. I'm doing it on my screen right now. The point I'm no, trying to make is screen with sharing, dude. Like, yeah, no, no. Like, the this is the way, this is, having conversations like this is a good way to practice, right? And, and for our other 2A debates and, and reasons like that. And G-Web is exactly right as far as the capitalist approach goes. I, I mean, he's 100% spot on. Like, I'm glad Remington's still around because I want a Remington TAC-14. And, you know, like I said, I think the quality control's a little bit hit and miss on Remington. 
but that's you know since freedom group bought them but other than that one thing i still think that they make good guns i still think that they're putting out good guns it's just that maybe a couple lemons slip through more than what maybe than in the past i don't know that for sure i don't know what the quality control was in the 60s or 70s i just know that some of the guns in six that were made back then were works of art literally and they're more handcrafted which anything handcrafted is going to be better but that doesn't mean that you know remington's using it's still using state-of-the-art cnc's just like everyone else is right now and i think they're definitely capable of putting out something that's like high quality or they just i mean but let's face it, like, they, they wouldn't have been safe if, if, if this co- that company of investors, that group of investors, it's exactly right, they want to make money, but they can't make money on shit. So if Remington wasn't selling something or if they didn't make something good that they thought that they could make money on, then they wouldn't be, they, they wouldn't have invested in Remington. So it's because they thought that Remington still had potential and still made good stuff. And still could be from a, from no. a business standpoint, from a business standpoint, uh, anybody that's been winning anything is gonna need something back revenue wise. Oh yeah, that, that's right. the main reason why. Like that, right? Like as some of us love, love what we do and stuff, and it might not be all about money, but from a big business standpoint, for a large business, it, you have to make money. That's all there is to it. You have to pay your employees. You have to, you know, pay your stockholders and shareholders and stuff like that. Like you have to, you have to make money. That's just that's a rule of thumb. So well, I think that they saw the potential of Remington and uh, revamp the company and try something different. Because yeah, I do remember uh, like Remington was losing their ass on some things. I don't know if it was all because of those trigger lawsuits or what the deal was, but I knew that they were going downhill when Freedom Group bought them. And I think Freedom Group saw okay, we can revamp this company, retool it, reorganize it, and uh, and those can be a large process. Cause like think of how big of a company just running well that's uh, all those other companies, right? I'm going to end the recording that I'm doing here for the video thanks everybody and that's all so we can continue a conversation going I'll just end it with uh, screen sharing here one of these articles I found said that the Cerebus and Freedom Group at this point own something like 20% and I think that was like a gun shop owner you know just estimating like what percentage of his products But if that's true, and they even own, you know, anywhere near a fifth of the industry, um, then again, would we be missing that portion of the industry? Without a Remington, does Mossberg sell that many more guns? I mean, you're not even taking into effect that the Freedom Group actually owns federal ammunition. Right, that's why I guess, yeah, I forgot about that, that when they talked about 20% of the store, it was the ammo too. I'm not saying everything they make is shit, it's just... I'll give, I'll use Smith & Wesson as an example. Everyone loves the old Smith & Wesson revolvers because they were built with quality. No. So that was a bit of conversation over on Gun Channels in a a live conversation that we're having and uh, just kind of stirring it up with a little bit of capitalism talk there. Uh, Give us some feedback here, or better yet, go over to Gun Channels and join in the conversation. Like Dead Horse said, it's an opportunity to uh, test some of these uh, discussion techniques and conversations and facts and it's fun just to have conversations with other fellow 2A people but when it's important when we want to change minds or open people's minds up to pro 2A conversations uh, the better conversations we can have the better we do for everybody so uh, join us over there and as always thanks for watching